So, my relationship with Tamal Krishna Goswami is quite different from Govinda Maharaj and Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. Because they were friends, but they did not work in his zone. They were not working with him. I was working in his zone. Actually, at one point, Tamal Krishna Maharaj had every leading devotee in the movement in his zone. He had recruited all the top book distributors, you know, the, the incarnation of book distribution. They were all in his party. They had all joined Tamal Krishna Maharaj. And I was thinking, what will I ever do? How could I ever be with them? There are so many leading devotees, you know, I mean. But then Krishna arranged somehow that these different devotees, they separated themselves from him. <coughs> and he had come over to Hong Kong. And he was there pretty much on his own. He brought one or two people from Dallas with him. He brought Giri Hari Maharaj. At that time he was a brahmachari. And at that time he'd come to Hong Kong. So Prabhupada just left the world. And our movement was in a lot of disorder. It was, you know, our movement. When a great Acharya leaves the planet, you, you know, you, you had to be there to know what all of us were going through. That Prabhupada had left us and we were wondering how will the movement go on and the, the verse, things were not clear. How to organize and what was the position of the different devotees and how should initiation be done in Guru Puja, these things. There were so many disturbances in our movement for some time. And that this is expected. This is described in the scriptures. When the great Acharya leaves, then it is a, there's always disturbance on the planet. But Tamal Krishna Maharaj settled into his situation. He, he was always very revolutionary in doing things. I remember he came to Bombay, I think it was 1979, and he brought his first uh, devotees from Hong Kong at that time. He had one young brahmachari and he had also he had made some uh, DVDs or well, videos at that time recorded lectures of his preaching in Fiji and he had also some disciples help him to supplement these videos that they would put uh, different pictures of Krishna Leela and even at one point there was a drama in the middle of the you know he would he would narrate the story of liquid beauty and a couple of devotee one devotee would play the the lusty man and the other his wife that this other woman would be the the woman beautiful woman and, and he would be telling the story and they would have it all enacted in the film it was really beautiful very well done I, I'm always trying to get a copy. If anybody has these videos, please, please be merciful and give us them. And we really would like to reproduce them because they're such wonderful preaching. So he had a, a series of these different lectures, maybe like four or five different lectures which he was giving. There was one also, the famous one, challenging Sai Baba. These devotees, you know, can you produce gold? Maybe you've seen that one. That one's more common. But there were others. There was a whole series of them. So, you know, this was before we had any CDs, before we had computers and all of these things. He's, he spent a lot of money, his own money, and he, he put a lot of effort into getting these things done for the preaching. Wonderful preaching. And this was 1978, 79. You know, no, no mobile phones, no computers, no DVDs, but he, he, he was thinking ahead. He wanted to have them shown on television. 
this always using his brain he had so much intelligence so much very active brain he's always thinking how to preach how to expand the Krishna consciousness movement so of course Prabhupada had sent him to China at, at that time many devotees they thought Prabhupada is punishing him this is a punishment because they, everybody thought Chinese people they have no interest in God they will never become devotees so they were thinking this is Prabhupada's punishment on him but when I heard about it, I never thought like that. I thought, oh, he's so lucky. I thought he's being given such a wonderful service to do for Srila Prabhupada. Of course, when he, went, when he came to China, none of these leaders who had been with him in Radha Damodar or helping him distribute, none of them came to China with him. They had all gone off their own different preachings. So he had come to China alone. So it was about that time I got a chance to come and he gave me an opportunity to take part, to, to assist, to be a tiny assistant in his China mission which Prabhupada had given him. Uh, so in the, you know, he, he, he originally would go into China on his own. He'd go with one Indian man sometimes. And he would just go stay in a hotel and just look around and just, just to see what's going on in China. Because at that time, China was very undeveloped. It was a very different place from what it is today. And, but, but he would go, he would go in and just look around and just get familiar with the, the country and try to see the culture. Then uh, at, at one point Russia had opened up really well that the communism had collapsed in Russia and it was that time Kirti Raj Prabhu had told Tamal Krishna Maharaj that you really have to get going more in China. You have to put more effort in there because we were only in Hong Kong and at that time also Taiwan was also very close that we couldn't really do anything in Taiwan either. So, you know, over the last 20 years there's been a lot of changes in these countries. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj, uh, with that, seeing the changes in Russia, at that time he gathered a few of us. Eka Chakra Prabhu and another devotee, one of Tamal Krishna Maharaj's disciples, Jai Baladev, who is there in Texas now. They were sent to Beijing and then Sankirtan Prabhu. Is he here? Sankirtan? Uh, anyway, he's in Marfa. Sankirtan Das and another uh, Swiss devotee who was disciple of Tamal Krishna Maharaj. They went to Shanghai and and I had been in the Philippines, he called me from the Philippines to come and help to go into Guangzhou. And I was sent with one Indian man, Indian young man, who was uh, from Hong Kong, who knew some Chinese. He knew some Cantonese. He spoke some Cantonese because he's from Hong Kong. So I was there in Guangzhou with this Indian man. And, and he sent us in there, he said go there and try and do something, see what you can do, see who you can meet. And we would take books and you know, we give them out free. Uh, and previously I had been teaching yoga in the Philippines, I had a course in the, in the university there in Manila. It was a credit course actually. <laughs> accredited course in the, the number one university in the Philippines. <laughs> so uh, I had left that to come to China. And when I came to China, I was so, so, I was so pleased that so many people were interested. We were getting so many people coming that I forgot all about going back to the Philippines. And so after, you know, we'd been there for a, a few months, he came to see us. 
and he was just furious with me <laughs> uh, because I had I had deserted my job in the Philippines you know I was supposed to be he was hoping I would make you know do some big preaching in Manila so anyway he was furious with me and he said you just get out of here I don't want to see your face again you know he just told me get out so so I okay okay I'm going <laughs> where are you going come back <laughs> so he, he would do like this he, he did it with his servant also Radha Krishna Prabhu and he did it with me but when he came there and when he saw the, all the devotees that we had in Guangzhou then he understood and he, he could see that this is a much better much more fertile field for preaching and, and he told me you're, you're, you're staying here you're not going <laughs> So this is how uh, we started in China, of course, that was 1988, then in 1989 China went through another big change because there was, a, in uh, the 4th of June, there was a Tiananmen uprising and there was a big conflict between the, the students who were radical and trying to overthrow the government. And so at that time, at that time we got problems. We, we, we all had to leave and they closed our yoga society and they seized all our books which we had printed legally so this slowed down our preaching in China for some time we had to wait we had to wait for some time in order before we could again gradually pick up the preaching you know, I often think how how much I'm not doing to uh, serve Tamal Krishna Goswami because uh, you know he wrote this wonderful book. This book was uh, we called it different names. It was called Li Guangshi, which was the name of the the main character. It was also called the New, New Century Yoga and then more recently it's called Open the Open the, Your Heart or Open Your Mind Dakai yeah, no. and we changed the names a few times it's the same book and this book is a wonderful summary of the Bhagavad Gita if anybody wants a bridge book for the Bhagavad Gita, you couldn't get a better book than that book because it introduces all the basic concepts of Bhagavad Gita, particularly dealing with impersonalism, which is a big problem with Chinese people. But he, he, he told me personally that it wasn't just going to be one book. I remember, well, I, it wasn't just me. We were all taking lunch together. He would always invite us to take lunch with him and we would sit. So I remember him telling us that the first book is on Bhagavad Gita and it is great Li Kuang Shi in America. A Chinese man had gone to America and he found out about yoga. He went to the temple. Jai, Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj Ki. Srila Jai Pataka Maharaj Ki. So, the, the first book was describing Lee Kuan Shi go to America and he learns about yoga. He goes to a Krishna temple, he meets devotees. And then after he finishes studies, like many Chinese today, there's so many Chinese study in the West now. And it's very good preaching. They, if they meet some receptive Chinese student, they can also bring him to a temple and so on and introduce him to Krishna consciousness. So the first book was describing how he comes to America and then after he studies he comes back to China and he gets a job in China. 
So people would read this book and then they would go to the hospital which was mentioned in the book and they would ask, where is Dr. Lee Kuang Shu? <laughs> really, people would go to this hospital because it mentioned Beijing Hospital number 23, like this, you know, and people would actually go to that hospital and say, I want to meet this Dr. Lee Kuang Shu. So this book was so powerful, it really influenced people's minds. And we, we did recruit many devotees after reading that book. But that was only the first book. The second book was where Lee Kuang Shu, uh, the second book was about Srimad Bhagavatam. The first book was the Bhagavad Gita. The second book was Srimad Bhagavatam and Lee Kuang Shu in China. And you're relating different things in China, different historic places in China, different streets and different people. And at the same time introducing the whole message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then there was to be a third book where Lee Kong Shi goes to India and he takes all his friends to India and they go and visit all the holy places and there all the Chaitanya Charitamrita is revealed. So in this way Tamal Krishna Goswami had these amazing ideas, amazing plans of what he was going to write and how he was going to introduce Krishna consciousness to the Chinese people in the most wonderful ways. And he could write so wonderfully. Even you look at his Vyasa Puja offerings when he first became a devotee, they were so deep, they were so philosophical, so rich in meaning. He was always very profound. It was no trick that he graduated with the highest marks possible when he went to study at university. So, I have to thank Garuda Prabhu, I don't know him, but he's my god brother, and he, he is a PhD himself, he lives in America, and he took up the task of completing Tamal Krishna Goswami's PhD work and having it published. So that book is available now. And that book introduces Srila Prabhupada as a theologian. A theologist, right? A theologist. He introduces Srila Prabhupada as a theologist and how Srila Prabhupada made such a unique contribution to the world in terms of the science of God. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj had that vision. He, he went to all the trouble to study at university right from the beginning, first year university. He had to go through three, four years to graduate, then go to England and do his postgraduate studies. He did all this for Srila Prabhupada so that he could establish more Srila Prabhupada's position, which we're just getting together nowadays. Rabindra Swarup Prabhu has written a paper on Srila Prabhupada's position. Different seminars are there emphasizing Srila Prabhupada's position. So Tamal Krishna Maharaj did all this work 10 years, 11 years ago. He was just finishing his PhD when he left this world. I feel very sorry, however, that I don't see his books available, hardly. Last year when I was here, one, one of his disciples approached me and requested me, please help me to get some of Tamal Krishna Goswami's books so that the devotees can read them. So we're trying, we're hope Sumo, Ananda Mohan Prabhu is. And we're working, trying to work with the BBT because there are wonderful books like Servant of the Servant and Jagannath Priyanataka and Lee Kuang Shu. There are others also, Final Order, the beautiful drama about Srila Prabhupada leaving this world. And there are also many things, manuscripts which he was working on which have not been published yet which I would love to see, but nobody gives me. I don't know who to go to, whoever I ask, nobody will give me them. Will they? <laughs> but he has manuscripts on Brahma Samhita, he was planishing, planning to publish commentaries on Brahma Samhita, which we have not seen. The second volume of Lee Kuan Shu was already nearly completed and his brother was given it to complete.
but still nothing has come out, nothing after 11 years, and also even very not easy to find his lectures, unless maybe on a website, everything on a website. But, but it would be nice to see especially these videos and things more readily available. Because not everybody likes to go on the web and download things from the internet. That if you can make more of these things available, it will be a wonderful opportunity for people to receive very powerful Krishna consciousness. Anyone who hears his lectures would be amazed. The potency which, with, with which he would deliver the lectures, how he would speak. I remember Srila Prabhupada went to the home of, was it, was it with Jaripataka Maharaj and Tamal Krishna Maharaj? Maharaj, you both spoke. Uh, remember that house? One evening we went there with Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada had you and Tamal Krishna Maharaj speak. Whose house was it? It was, I think, Raghava Pandits, was it? You don't remember? Ginger Mall. It was outside. The program was outside. Huh? No, no. We came from Mayapur, n not far from Mayapur. Huh? Mahesh Pandit. Mahesh Pandit. Mahesh Pandit, was it? Yeah. Uh, 77. 77, yeah, yeah, right. So. Huh? Malvar. Mahesh Pandit. So Prabhupada had gone there and Prabhupada's health was not very good. Prabhupada requested Jaipataka Maharaj, Tamal Krishna Maharaj to, to both speak. And they both gave wonderful lectures. If you had heard them, you would have been amazed. Tamal Krishna Goswami Maharaj Ki. His Holiness and Shinga Maharaj Ki. Maharaj will, will see that Srila Gurudev was speaking through you. We'll try to make those things more available. So we thank you. Next, we'll have His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj speak. Thank you.